They send beautiful girls to the players. They give them houses, flats, Rolex watches. We expose the criminal gangs who fix international cricket matches. I'm telling you, meet script I give you now. It will happen, happen and happen. Al Jazeera's investigative unit reveals how fixers, bookmakers and players rig matches. 60 to 70 percent matches we can sack. You say fix, yeah? Fix. International players agree to take money to play in a corrupt cricket tournament. Hassan, would you play? Yeah. I have about 30 players who will play what I tell them to do. If Robin gives you a script and a plan, you will follow it. Yeah, of course, 100%. That's the, that's the plan. My only game will be scripted. Criminals describe how they paid bribes to influence the score in four international cricket matches. Do you have players in every national team? Yes. And we're offered the chance to profit from another form of match fixing, doctoring the pitch. <laughs> We don't care about the entertainment as long as you're yes. making the money. Then what's the problem? <laughs> <laughs>Cricket was invented in England over 400 years ago and is now played in more than 125 countries. Cricket is known as a gentleman's game and at club matches like this one in West London with its cricket whites, polite applause and civilised tees it's not hard to see why. But throughout the world, the professional game has a sinister side, with criminal gangs and illegal bookmakers making huge sums of money. In recent years, cricket has been tarnished by a series of match-fixing scandals. International players took bribes to underperform, and the criminals bet heavily on guaranteed outcomes. In 2000, South Africa's captain, Hansi Cronje, received a life ban for taking more than 100,000 US dollars from match fixers in India. I was required to ensure that Gibbs would score less than 20 runs, that Williams would bowl poorly and go for more than 50 runs during his 10 overs. I was to be paid for doing this. Three Pakistan internationals accepted a total of $200,000 to underperform in a test match in England. A New Zealand international was banned for life after confessing that he fixed matches. My name is Lou Vincent and I am a cheat. Our 18-month investigation reveals that match fixing in cricket is more widespread than ever, but also becoming more difficult to prove. The high-profile scandals have forced the criminal gangs to turn to more subtle forms of match-fixing. To discover how the underworld syndicates operate, I went undercover as a British businessman. I was interested in buying inside information about fixers in test matches, the highest level of the international game. We used an underworld intermediary to make contact with a match-fixer in Mumbai. Hey, hi, how are you? We used hidden cameras to film Anil Manawa. He works for D Company, one of the world's biggest mafia syndicates. Indian intelligence sources confirm that he's a middle-ranking operative in the company's match-fixing division. So how many years have you been doing this, fixing matches? Six to seven years. And any problems? No. Sometimes small problems are there, but it, we will handle it. What about the anti-corruption guys in the cricket board? Actually, if you have money, you will do anything. D Company is named after Dawood Ibrahim, one of the world's most wanted men. 
A 2014 New York University study said D Company was involved in contract killing, drugs and arms trafficking, extortion, and illegal gambling. D Company's involvement in match fixing started way back in the 90s. They saw an opportunity to control a, a vast market which was hugely profitable. We had to convince Manawa that we had the money to do business. That is how serious we are. I need to know from you what you're going to do to get that money, to earn it. Almost 60 to 70 percent matches uh, we, we can set. You say fix, yeah? Fix. And do you do just international games or which other games do you fix? International, uh, we are doing most. Do you have players in every national team? Yes. yes. Match fixers still rig the overall result of some matches, but increasingly they're turning to fixing what happens during just a small part of a match. This is known as spot fixing. One of the criminal's favorite spot fixes involves paying players to underperform during a session of overs. One over consists of six balls delivered by a bowler to the batsman. A session is a limited number of overs, usually six or ten. ODI 12. I asked Manawa about betting on different kinds of fixes. Session is better because you have more and more chances to bet. And in match, you have only two options. Mm. Those are... Bookmakers give odds on how many runs will be scored by the end of a 10-over session. The 10th, 20th or 30th over and so on. For example, bookies may say the session runs total will be 66 to 68 runs. Punters place bets on the team scoring either below 66 or above 68. The match fixers bribe players to underperform and bet heavily on the score being below 66. Session fixes are more popular these days for match fixers because it's really hard to detect in a test match you're talking about a tiny part of the game. A test match can last for up to five days, with each side batting twice. This means there are many opportunities for session betting and fixing. It also doesn't require multiple players. So it's much easier to get one or two guys to agree to fix a session runs bet. They give them expensive gifts, like Rolex watches. They give them houses, flats, cars. This former international cricketer, who has been accused of match fixing, spoke to us only if we concealed his identity. They send beautiful girls to the players, like models, so they get involved with them. You're actually not asking a player to compromise their as they see it, the integrity of the match, but they are simply uh, making a manipulation of a particular part of the game to make a lot of money. I know of one player who would always say, it has no impact on the results, there's nothing wrong with it. For some players, we have directly connected with them, and we decide some money we will give you this amount, or player will ask, I need uh, how much, how much you need. Okay, we will decide. The bigger the player, the bigger the prices. Like 50 grand, 100 grand in one game. The largest sum of money, I think, 200,000 pound in 2015, 2016. They have everything they need and can use it against you. They can trap you, blackmail you. There is no escape. Players are trapped for life, and that's the danger, particularly when they go on to become uh, commentators or coaches and thereby remain in positions of influence where they can corrupt the younger generation. As I built my reputation as a businessman with multi-million dollar backers, I was introduced to another match fixer. 
Robin Morris works mostly in the fast-paced 2020 matches, where each side bats for just 20 overs. Yeah. Great. Now, guys, uh, would you like a drink? We can help each other, man. For example, I have an info information. I'll give it to you. And you can make good money. Big time. 2020 tournaments have become a multi-billion dollar industry that attracts huge crowds. They provide Morris with an easy opportunity to make money. For example, in 2020, they have a session of 10 hours. So 10 hours, like they say, 70, 71 or 72 runs. So then accordingly, we do betting. And for example, one of our friends is playing there. Tell him to stop it. Nine, ten overs, don't score more than seven yeah. runs. After ten overs, get out. Pay them player and bloody hell get money from the market. Match fixers will go to players who are guaranteed to be in the starting eleven. Top players who can do things for them. They'll pursue them and slowly and gradually get them involved in match fixing. Morris is with the youngest cricketer ever to play for Pakistan. Hassan Raza made his international debut when he was just 14. Morris and Raza played 2020 cricket together for Mumbai Champs. Now they're working to make money from match fixing. How much do the players ask for? Quite a lot. Like, for example, what would be an average, um, typical? 45 lakhs. 45. That's around 70,000 US dollars. So you then have to make a lot more than that to be profitable, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, but it's, if, if you have a setup like that, you can make money in the session. Big money. The match fixers need a network of bookmakers to accept bets. You hit 10 bookies. 10 bookies one go. You can bet how much ever you want to bet. I'm going to place scores of bets with as many bookmakers as I possibly can. That is important because it covers the trail. The bookmakers, they all talk to each other and they see a lot of bets coming from one particular individual. They're going to shut the market down. Al Jazeera gained rare access to a bookmaker's operation near Mumbai. Almost all betting is illegal in India, yet there are more than 100,000 bookmakers all over the country. Gamblers or punters are given odds for bets such as the score after a session of overs. The bookies set up in private rooms with phones and computers hidden from the police. The bets are logged just by the guy at the other end of the phone. He'll be shouting out the odds and he's got his mate sitting next to him writing down what punter is having what bet. <laughs> Punters have to be recommended before they're allowed to bet. I don't log in and send him the money via PayPal or whatever. He sends a run around the next day to collect my losses or to give me my winnings. Where's the money gone? Where's it going? whose pockets it's lining, there's no paper trail. Here they're betting on a match in the Indian Premier League, one of the world's richest sports events. The accountants KPMG valued the Indian betting market at 60 billion US dollars. Now, if you're a match fixer and you have inside information because you've paid the players, you have the possibility of making a huge amount of money. Because once you hear what the runs quote is going to be, you're going to organise for those players to go under. Robin offers me a deal if I bet on a session that he's fixed. In the winning, you give me 30%. Mm. 
A fix is confirmed only when a match is about to start, after the captains have tossed a coin to see who bats first. Pre-arranged signals are used to let the players know that the fix is on. Every time it's a different sign, it's decided in morning with players you have to play normally, but when we show you a sign, you have to do this. The players then indicate that they're ready to deliver. He's going to remove his pads. I just want to throw gloves on. There are 100 signals, you know? The signal can be many different things, like wearing a wristband or a headband or bowling in sunglasses. If you give the signal that we know that he's going to do, it, do the work, then you can start placing the bet. Yeah. Morris later gives an example of how, if Hassan Raza is batting, he might confirm that he'll carry out a fix. Hassan is playing. Okay. And I'll tell him, Hassan, on ninth or eighth, eighth over, fifth ball or sixth ball, yeah. you remove your pads. Or what you can do is, when you're when you're taking a strike, yeah. okay, when you're taking a strike, when you're taking a strike, bowler comes and just walk off. Stop, stop. The batsman raises his hand to stop the bowler, a sign that the fix will start. The batsman will then slow down his run rate. Normally, they give 14 or 15 runs in two hours. We want to lay. 15 runs will not happen. I see. Only seven. Yeah. So you can place your bet now that time. I see. Fast. The match fixers also sell details of the fixers to wealthy clients. I was playing the role of a frontman for clients who wanted to invest in fixed matches. We are dealing in 25 to 30 customers only. And they are very big. Who are connected with us uh, from last uh, four to five years? Mm. They are earning per match, per team, four to ten crores. After several meetings, I gained Manawa's trust, and he gave me a price to buy details of a fix. It's a depends on team and player. So it's a between twenty to forty-five as twenty to forty-five lakh That's rupees. It. That's up to 70,000 US dollars for one fix. I tell Manawa that I'd like to place money on an England match. Will you be fixing for India and England? Definitely, we are working on it. We have planning to fix all this, and we are working on it. The fix will be confirmed only at the last moment, just before the start of a test match between England and India. For one week before I will told you in which match we are able to give your team. And when match is going to start, we will decide early morning what will happen. Elsewhere in Mumbai, I meet our second match fixer, Robin Morris. He tells me about another kind of fix he's carried out in India and Sri Lanka. And I, and I have people walking on the ground during the match. They keep sending us pictures and everything. Gaurav Rajkumar is Morris's business partner. They bribe groundsmen to doctor cricket pitches to favour either bowlers or batsmen. How much do you pay a groundsman? 25 lakh rupees in India. For a groundsman, that's eight years' salary for fixing one test match. We need to ensure that there's a result. But there should not be a single ball ball on the fifth day. A pitch for bowlers means batsmen will get out more quickly and the match will not last for the full five days. That would mean one side has won. So Morris bets against, or in betting jargon, lays a draw. You will lay that on draw. You lay a draw. Money is in the pocket in four days. In four days. Well, what are the chances of, of that working? Is it like 90% chance, 80%? 100%, 100%, 200%. Yeah. Because the pitch is made by me. 
If you know what the pitch is going to do, you can make a hell of a lot of money. He's betting against the draw happening. It doesn't matter who wins. And to have that inside information, it's a license to print money, really. At a later meeting, Morris explains the second form of pitch fixing, preparing a surface that favors batsmen. There are a lot of bets on this uh, innings total. Right. Inning total Lovely. starts around 270. Right. So 280. No, no, I'm OK, so they give you odds on, on the score. Yeah, yeah. The match fixers know that a batting pitch will mean high scores, so they bet on a high total for the first innings. And you can, you can put money on the 280 plus. For example, the innings total is 280. You have to back to, uh, over 280 or under 280. So we are backing over 280 if the batting pitch is there. I persuaded Morris to introduce me to one of his corrupt pitch curators. What happens is, we, we can make a pitch whatever we want to do here. Right. To the region of the curator. Right. And he is the assistant manager and curator of the ball, from ball uh, stadium. Taranga Indika oversees the condition of the pitch at Gaul, where Sri Lanka play international matches. Indika explains how he prepares a wicket for bowlers. And what do you do for that? They were asking okay, keep some grasses like uh, one inch. Eh? Yeah. You, you but the Turindu Mendes is a professional Sri Lankan cricketer and another of Morris's accomplices. Normally they are asking put water like half an hour. Yes. So he will put only 15 minutes. And they were asking roll it to like half an hour. But he will roll it only 15 minutes. From there, they will make it turn, start turning, right? That's so why it's good for spinners, good for bowlers. If you want to make a spinning pitch, yeah. you don't do water. It's very dry. So the ball turns and <coughs> it's typical for the batting. Yes. And the game will not last five days. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. The match fixers have to get their work done before inspectors from cricket's governing body, the International Cricket Council, arrive to check the pitch. Before the match, you have to do that. Because after the match, what's going on? But there is a technique that the ICC inspectors do not detect. You know, one thing you can do during the night, mm -hmm. the dust thing. You have to just do it slowly. So, yes. What they do is they press it and burn. The extra pressure applied with the special brush damages the pitch and makes it more difficult for batsmen. Indica trusts only a few members of the ground staff. Indica suddenly leaves the room. He's nervous. Is really scared? You know, one guy was there, he got caught doing this. Some phone trapped him. And he was from US Roma. So that also he's very scared to meet people. Uh, of course. In 2016, the chief curator of Gaul was suspended for failing to cooperate with anti-corruption officials. Morris calls Indika to reassure him. In part two, we discover the test matches Indika has helped to fix. Indika, Australia, where was that playing? In, in what do you get for being a title sponsor? And we expose plans to set up a tournament in Dubai purely for match fixing. We have control on every team, every player. In part one, the match fixers described how they rig international cricket matches. We don't care about the entertainment as long as you're making the money. I'm telling you, each script I give, you know, it will happen, happen, and happen. Now we find out which matches they're planning to fix. Yeah. Manau works for D Company, 
the mafia that runs most of India's illegal betting trade. He tells us a fix has been arranged for a test match in the series between India and England. In Chennai, definitely. I will inform you after uh, toss, when match will start and uh, what is the market is opening. At that time, uh, it will finalize, uh, session will come for 20 hours or 40 hours or 9 hours. He said the alleged fix would involve only a few players from one of the teams. Which team you got? Is it England or India? England. England. What is the the price? The price actually forty lakhs. That's around sixty thousand US dollars. We pay Manawa nothing now. We give the money to our intermediary to hand over only if the fix goes down. That you hold that? Yes. Okay. And he can earn. Yeah. Four times or I'm very from this amount you can earn two to three crores. Manawa believes we will make up to half a million dollars by betting on the fix. What is the uh, fixing? Uh, I will tell you on Friday. Yes, after, after, the toss. After, after the toss. After the toss. Just before the match starts, Manawa calls our middleman, who goes by the name Pintu. He's had dealings with Manawa for several years. Manawa names the 10 over session that he says has been fixed, but for legal reasons, we are not revealing that information. I will call you after over in very next one over, and I will give you how many run come over there. Okay. 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 Manawa calls again. He says the batsman will score below the bookie's figure for the runs total at the end of the session. There is a second element to the fix. The last over will be Amanda, Indian betting slang for an over in which no more than two runs are scored. Although we can't identify the 10 over session which Manawa said had been fixed, we've shown our evidence to betting corruption investigators. Chris Eaton is a former Interpol agent who specialized in sports corruption. Manawa's prediction about the score and the manda are accurate. It's very compelling evidence. So compelling that it's almost inevitably true. Clearly, what he uh, predicted took place exactly as he predicted. I'm telling you, uh, each script I give, you know, it will happen, happen, and happen. Another investigator is Ed Hawkins, who's advised the anti corruption team at the International Cricket Council. I think it's mind-blowing. I would defy anyone who loves the game or is interested in cricket not to watch that and have a knot in their stomach and feel pretty sick about it. It is really significant that he's given you tips and he hasn't been paid. That is a very important point. These are shocking allegations for the highest level of cricket in the world. Manawa thinks wrongly that we have bet on his fix. At our next meeting, he wants to know how we did. You're well. Yeah. Business is good, huh? Yes. Okay, how much money did you make in the Chennai match? Oh, that's between me and my investors. <laughs> how much did the company make? <laughs> <laughs> Near the Gaul International Stadium, we meet our second match fixer, Robin Morris. He pays the groundsman to prepare the pitch in an unlawful way. 
Morris wants 30% of my winnings in return for information on matches where he controls the result. The groundsman at Gaul has doctored the pitch for recent international matches. How long have you known him for? Oh, I don't know. You've known him all the time. And you trust him, you've seen him. I've fixed it, you've seen him. I've seen him. So you've done two? How many have you done? Two. Two. Tarindu Mendes is a professional player who's worked with the Sri Lanka cricket board. He did and India. Where was that played? In England. Rangana, you've got the coin. Give it a spin. Heads is the coin. The groundsman says that for this match, he made a pitch to favour batsman. Viratia won the toss. Uh, congratulations. What do you what do you plan to do? Uh, we're gonna bat first. Looks like a pretty hard surface. A hard surface allows batsmen to score more runs. <laughs> Taranga Indika is the groundsman at Gaul who is working with Morris and Mendes. Okay. India had the advantage of batting first on a favourable pitch. India wanting some quick runs here. They scored a massive 600 runs in their first innings. It's clever that to bring up 600. Morris had bet on the first team batting, getting a high score, and made a handsome profit. I, I did not expect to be here. The groundsman said he also fixed an international match in the opposite way, making a pitch to help bowlers. The pitch at Gaul had been prepared to favour bowlers. The dry wicket helped bowlers to make the ball spin more and cause problems for batsmen. It uh, looks pretty dry at this stage, so I, I dare say it'll take some turn this match. Edge to do that carry. Matthews claims it. On a pitch stacked against them, the batsmen struggled. <laughs> the win came after less than two and a half days of the five-day match. Bowling. Herat strikes. <laughs> The condition of the Gore wicket prompted claims of pitch fixing at the time, but the ICC took no action. Oh, and there's an appeal for LBW. It was one of the shortest test matches ever played. Morris had bet heavily that the match would end quickly. He made a substantial profit and was soon back home. Match got over in two and a half days. Third day, I said, f match is over. Third day, I was in Mumbai. By now, I've won the trust of our other match fixer, Anil Manawa. He believes I'm a businessman backed by wealthy investors. He names three players he says were involved in the fix during the India-England match in Chennai. Well, business is good, huh? Actually, uh, that match, uh, actually... This player involved. Given the gravity of the allegations, Al Jazeera has decided not to name the three England players at this time, but will pass our evidence to the relevant authorities. In the meantime, through their lawyers, the three players categorically denied the allegations, stating that they are made by a source who is a known criminal. The players also say that for the batting team to fix scores to within such degree of precision as alleged is highly improbable, if not practically impossible. There is no evidence to suggest that any other members of the team were involved in or aware of the alleged fix. It appears that D Company runs match fixing like any other business, 
unconcerned by the ICC's anti-corruption unit. Company है ना वो उसके कनेक्शन रहते हैं वो लोग मैनेज कर लेते हैं ये सब कुछ कुछ टाइप के प्रॉब्लम If a person like a D company operative is to be believed and he has credence because we know he's known to the intelligence agencies and he is saying that they have connections at the ICC then the the game is damned there is some rules of our company some uh, secrets of our company no one who involved in our company they have no any rights to say our secrets how we how we are doing our business At a later meeting, Manar reveals how much D Company pays to carry out a fix involving the world's leading cricket nations. That's over a million dollars for the top teams, a payment often made through a middleman or cricket official. Player ka price hum log nahi decide karte. वो जो भी बंदा है हमको तो उनको ग्लोबल एक अमाउंट दे देना है और वो किस प्लेयर को वो लोग उनका भी रहता है वो क्या किसको कितना डिस्ट्रीब्यूट कर रहे हैं उससे हमको मतलब ही नहीं As part of my cover I told the match fixers that I had access to wealthy sponsors Robin Morris and his associate wanted investment in their business venture in the Gulf. I've been born and brought up in Dubai. Yeah, I've played a lot of cricket in Dubai. Gaurav Rajkumar is an advertising executive based in the United Arab Emirates. So I know a lot of people in the councils and everything. Yes, I have very good relationships. The cricket councils, the cricket councils. The opportunity that I see over here is that every cricket nation has their own T20. You say South Africa, India, Pakistan, Australia, England, Sri Lanka, and working at the moment. The plan to set up in the United Arab Emirates a corrupt cricket tournament. Dubai is a key yeah. choice. So international cricket happens in Dubai. Yeah. Prime yeah. Minister yeah. himself was shocked to see the kind of crowds that have come to watch a cricket game. of two franchises so now yeah. now I think we can see okay. some type of okay. Rajkumar has prepared a detailed business plan I know how every tournament works what are the expenses yes. yeah. to the everything yeah. to make money from betting the games must be broadcast live so gamblers can watch and place their bets T20 tournament will be live televised okay. because as long as there's no live it's not any benefit to us yeah. because yeah. i have already been to the head of uh, dubai cricket council and he is very pro to this idea okay but he said that it's like right it needs to be approved from the icc so emirates cricket board will make all the documentation and everything but we'll need some kind of documentation from our end also mm. just because they need to see that the tournament is legal the tournament will involve four teams from different parts of the uae Each team will have a mix of international and Emirates-based players. So the format is just a four-team T20. Like we will name the teams like Sharjah Gladiators, Ajman Typhoon, okay. Dubai Dynamite, yeah. Abu Dhabi Champs. Fifteen players per team. My understanding with Dubai Cricket Council is we'll provide them with our list of 16 to 18 international players. They are all with me. I've already spoken to them. We made arrangements, everything. They are willing to come and play, so I'll tell you who the players are. The whole thing will be completely complying to ICC's mandate and everything. He names several players he says have agreed to fix matches. Only a few players in each team will know that the 10-day tournament is a front for match fixing. Only that we trust; otherwise, we'll not even open our gob. Because if we do that, one person will tell somebody else, and the whole thing gets leaked. Every player will be paid a fee for each of the 10 matches in the tournament. But the ones carrying out the fixes will receive 40 times that amount. For genuine fees, they will get around 1000 pounds, but for doing the, the setting work, for doing your work, 35-40000. Okay. That's equivalent to around $55,000 for just one match. That money is like nothing. Yeah. They're going to work for us. Yeah. They can make Ten pounds. So a corrupt player would earn over half a million dollars in just ten days. 
the match fixers target those at the beginning or at the end of their careers. We are on the yeah. fringes. This guy is international. He has played inter. He's played test cricket almost. He played 30, 40 West days. Indeed. Youngsters will also come. Mm -hmm. The ones which are already just getting into the side yeah. or whatever. The captains, all overseas players, will ensure that the fixes are carried out. We will work hand yeah. in glove with yeah. them. Every team has four overseas players. Yeah. We are trying to push it to five overseas. And they will they will all be working. All five will work. All five will work. For that big fee. So the claim by Morris that he can sit up an entire tournament for the purpose of, uh, of corruption, <laughs> of course it rings true to me. I've seen it in football. I've seen entire tournaments being manipulated for the purpose of betting corruption and betting fraud. We all will be sitting with the yeah. player, having drinks or food yeah. or whatever, and we'll discuss the entire yeah. script one day before the game. We'll plan it properly. They'll be like puppets. Exactly. Yes. You, you know, just got it. Total control. Of the player. That's exactly yeah. what everyone wow. wants. Yeah. Total control. Yeah. We meet Manar again. He tells us about another fix involving international players. It's two days before the match. As the match starts, Manawa rings. Our middleman takes the call. The fix is for a 10 over session. Hello? Ha, I'm Manawa. Hello? Ha, 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 Manawa will call us during the first over of the session to give details of the fix. Right on time, he calls and tells us the runs total quoted by the bookies. He says we should bet on the score being below the bookies' figures. And again, the last over of the session will be a low score. Amanda. Okay. Manawa tells us to bet big. The middleman was then briefly confused. The score was already higher than the one given by Manawa. In Indian betting shorthand, the hundreds column is left out. Our investigators watched the session that was allegedly fixed. You wonder whether he's taking his helmet off deliberately, don't you? Twice. Yeah, twice. No runs were scored in the over that Manawa mentioned. Once again, the fix went down exactly as he said it would. The batsmen appeared to be trying not to score runs. You're watching a guy bat and, he, and he's, he's, like a, he's like a cat on hot coals just desperately trying to get on top of the ball and to cover any edge that it might squirt off to concede a run. You cannot have so many coincidences in terms of what Manau was predicting and what occurred. Our other match fixer is looking for sponsors for a corrupt cricket tournament he plans to set up in Dubai. This is like an international, mini international level. It's not top A grade, it's going to be B, C grade players. 
the sole purpose of the tournament will be to control the results and do spot fixes. We have told them that we have access to potential sponsors. 15 players in a team, we'll get about five uh, overseas players. Morris is with Hassan Raza. Raza played 23 times for Pakistan. Are you interested, Hassan? Would you play? Yeah. yeah. The following day, Morris tells me his tournament will be on international betting sites. The match will be on live. If we have uh, this live coverage, we can get odds on Betfair. We don't want to start one tournament Dubai and finish off there. We want to create those things Dubai. Then we, go, we can do it at Hong Kong. Yeah. Then um, we can see Zimbabwe. And once we succeed here, mm -hmm. we can go to Sri Lanka. I can sort everything out in Sri Lanka. My plan is, I don't want to just do it once and f*** off. Morris says the players he controls will fix sessions and even throw a match. And they'd be happy to lose the game. Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter. Because it's all us. Yeah. They don't care about winning, losing. We want to have a game our way. We don't want entertainment. No. No, 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 no exactly. We don't care about the entertainment as long as we are losing yes. the one. Morris claims that he has players in the UAE national team who will fix their country's international matches. We have UAE team in our hand. Yeah. yeah. I have five players. Right. Say three are batsmen and two are bowlers. We have one bowler who can give more than 35, 40 runs. The bowler's job is to give runs. The batsman's job is to score very few runs. They are very smart that way. The UAE ought to look at this not only from a cricketer perspective and a cricket administrator's perspective, but they need to look at it from a uh, from a criminal law perspective too. Morris tells me how much he pays the UAE players. Seven lakh rupees per player. Yeah, that's around twenty-five thousand US dollars each. Morris then introduces me to more international players willing to deliver fixes in his tournament. We have clients who are potential sponsors for the tournament, but my clients want assurances. If Robin gives you a script and a plan, you will follow it. Yeah, of course, 100%. That, that's, the, that's the plan. Jivantha Kulatunga is a former international and coach of the Sri Lanka women's team. We will execute the plan. That's, that's not yeah, a problem. Yeah. He's still playing. Still He's playing. Still yeah. all playing. Still playing. You're also playing, yeah. yeah. Still, I'm on, he, on to play for the T20. Dilara Lokuatigi has played 11 times for his country. We both played together in the same team. When, when was that? In 2009. Nine. Okay, Canada cool. Cup. That's not a problem yeah. because now we are not playing. Both players are keen to do Morris's corrupt work. You know, we can do it now without a hesitation. This is a professional matter, so it's not a big thing. Mm. Playing cricket for us is like brushing our teeth in the exactly. morning. Right? <laughs> but playing a gate into your plan is the easiest thing. There's no pressure for us. Yes. Yeah. Underperform is easier than yeah. to perform. Like Robin said, Robin will tell us what to do, we'll do that. Okay. Okay. Easy. We are here yeah. because of you. Yeah. So we look after you, you look after us. Simple. Yeah. Yeah, it's really about making money in the end. Yeah. Yeah. In the end. Yeah. 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 Then what's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> We meet Manawa for the last time. We discuss the fix of the India-Australia match in Ranchi. Well, it was a success because it worked exactly. We were watching and the run rate just slowed. Manawa names the two Australian players he says were involved in the fix. Who was batting? <laughs> and, and who's the other? Uh, <laughs> Once again, Given the gravity of the allegations, Al Jazeera has decided not to name the two Australian players at this time, but will pass our evidence to the relevant authorities. We have made various attempts to contact the two players, but they have not responded to the allegations. There is no evidence to suggest that any other members of the team were involved in or aware of the alleged fix. <laughs> 
अपने हिसाब से खेलने ही वाले ठीक है लेकिन जब कोई सेटिंग हो गया है तो फिर वो हम लोगों के हिसाब से वो खेलेगा the Chennai and the Ranchi test matches that were mentioned by uh, Manau are certainly worthy of a serious and, and transparent investigation for the ICC. The fact is that, uh, that, that he was able to accurately predict the end of two sessions, one session each of those test matches. That brings those test matches into credibility question immediately. Manau thinks he's going to be paid for the information he gave us about the fix at the Ranchi match. Now I'm afraid there is no money. Oh. I'm not a businessman trying to make money from fixing matches. I have not spent one cent yeah. on bets. We are investigating match fixing oh. on an international scale. You're someone obviously at the heart of this. Now, what do you say to the millions of people who watch cricket innocently, believing it's fair competition? They spend good money please. watching cricket, and you are actually please. corrupting the game. Please. 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 You're corrupting it. Please. You are letting these people down. Please. Yes, no, I just want to ask Manau about the young people. There absolutely must be an investigation. We're talking about test matches involving India and England and India and Australia. Um, we have got significant on-camera admissions by match fixers giving pre-game information about what is going to happen and then that occurring in the game. Yes, you're correcting the game. Yes. The fans of cricket need to see that something is done in response to these allegations that you are bringing to fall. Yes, I'm coming. Coming.